problems that were due on February 20th. So I gave you a sheet of paper with these on it. Remember, the goal is to use uh, show enough work so that I know you know what you're doing. So that doesn't mean just like an answer, doesn't mean just multiplying things without units. So for problem 24, it was saying windblown hair and can't swim ashore. Notice the names are quite amusing. Are bathing in, boating in Lake Augusta storm. Starting from rest, they accelerate the uniform acceleration of 0.29 meters per second squared. How far are they after 18 seconds? So we're going to use this formula because it has displacement and acceleration and time. And so they end up being 47 meters away after 18 seconds. For problem number two, there's a couple ways you could have done this. Um, talked about a funny car going a quarter mile race in a 4.437 seconds, determining the average velocity, the average acceleration, the final velocity of the car. So definitely you could have attacked this in multiple, multiple ways. Average velocity, first of all, I just got that the displacement is 402.25 meters divided by the time, that's 90.7 meters per second. For part B, if you're looking at figuring out how far it goes, or the acceleration, I would use this formula again and rearrange to solve for A. So 402.25 is equal to 1 half times A times 4.437 squared. Algebraically rearrange that, I get 40.8 meters per second squared. For part C, there's a couple ways you could have done this also. You could have realized that the initial and final velocity divided by 2 would equal 90.7, and you start from rest, so the final would be 181 meters per second. Or you could have done VF equals VI plus A times T. Well, this A times the T that was up here would give you also 181 meters per second. So lots of ways to do things. For PC13, we gave you a graph, and the woman's name was Renata Gas. Yeah. Um, so it starts at 18 meters per second, goes down to 6 seconds, and the acceleration is the slope of the graph. You could use that, or you could use the information that was given and use the, that formula. So this basically this formula is the slope of the velocity time graph. So ends at 0, starts at 18, so you have negative 3 meters per second per second is the acceleration. For part B, Displacement is going to equal the distance traveled in this case because you're only going one direction, so that's the area of the graph. So you can do 1 half times 18 times 6 is 54 meters. You could have also done something with your x equals vit plus 1 half at squared would have gotten you the same amount. For PC18, It says a Cessna is taking off, has a takeoff speed of 28 meters per second. Obviously, it would start at zero meters per second. You're asked to find the length of the <coughs> um, runway that it would need. So I think I use this formula. You could use others, but this has final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and delta x, and you are given the acceleration. So this comes out to 206 meters. <coughs> For problem number 20, says, Susie loves to ski, or Latovsky, depending on how you pronounce it. But Susie loves to ski, has reached the end of the ski slope and abruptly slows down from 29 meters per second to 1.8 meters per second and 1.45 second. Determine her acceleration and the distance she moved during that braking period. So to find the acceleration, VF minus VI over T, negative 18.75 meters per second squared. For displacement, I would use this version of formula, I believe this was formula five, maybe, or formula four. Maybe formula three. Actually, I think it's formula three. Anyhow, <clears throat> we'll see. Three, four, or five. But we have an initial velocity and an acceleration, so we need to take both of those into account. And so that was plus 22.3 meters. So this part basically tells us how far we go if there was no acceleration and a constant speed. This part tells us how much we go due to the acceleration, and since that's negative, this is a negative number. For PC28, could have solved this multiple ways, but essentially you've got a skydiving. Um, skydiver is Luke out below. Reached a terminal speed of 10.4 meters per second as he approached the ground with his parachute. So during an attempt to snap one last photo, he drops it from a height of 52 meters above the ground. So at this point, even though they call that terminal speed, 
That's his initial speed that the camera drops. So the first part was asking about the camera, the speed at which the camera hits the ground, which is its final speed. I use this again. I'm using delta y instead of delta x because we're thinking vertically. Doesn't really matter to me. Hmm, orange. So end up doing this, getting 33.6 meters per second. To find out the acceleration, or pardon me, the acceleration is equal to delta v over delta t. So I can rearrange that to solve for delta t. So the change in velocity divided by acceleration gives me my time interval. In other words, due to gravity, we speed up 9.8 meters per second every second. So if we started at this speed, end up at that speed, it's going to take 2.37 seconds. For problem PC30, this was in the NASA Glenn Center, and I think I should need to show the video of this. I think people told me I didn't show it before. Um, about something being in free fall. Free fall means the only force acting on something is gravity, and you could ignore all air resistance. So the distance that things fall in the NASA Glenn facility is 132 meters. You can use this formula to figure out the time it would take to fall. That's around 5.19 seconds. To find out the final velocity, that's simply acceleration times time. That's a rearrangement of our formula, one of our formulas. I think this form that's formula three, actually. So this one up here, formula four, and this one here, formula five. So I get around 50.8, 50.9 meters per second. For eight, I'm going to almost certainly go over in class. So this is leading into our discussion of projectiles, which is the next mathematical topic that we're going to be getting to. And I think you'll like it, but it's the next topic. And so the big idea is to think symmetry and split this information up. You're only given one piece of information that basically, mathematically, this thing was near 3.5 seconds, 3.56 seconds. But there's a lot of free information. For example, the reason that the rate the speed of this thing, or the velocity rather, would change is due to a constant acceleration downward. That's free information. The time up would equal the time down if it's going to be hitting the ground again. That means that's half of the total time. That's free information. Velocity at the tippy top of its path is zero meters per second. We saw that with the ball toss lab. Free information. And therefore, since gravity is slowing it down on the way up, it's speeding it up on the way down. <coughs> That means the initial velocity up is equal to the final velocity down. So to solve these types of problems, I like to split them up into parts. So that way, I don't have to worry so much about positives and negatives. I'll think of half the trip, and I'm going to choose the second half of the trip. Because since gravity acts down, if I want to think of that as positive, I can think of my initial velocity as zero, and my final velocity as the velocity right before it hits the ground, which would equal the velocity that it's thrown. So to think about this, I know that's my acceleration. I know the falling time is 1.78 seconds. So the final velocity is around 17.4 meters per second. And that also equals the velocity at which it's thrown. To find the maximum height of the ball, again, I can think of half the trip. I wouldn't think of the whole trip, because if I used a version of this formula here for the whole trip, that would give me zero, because it ends up at the same height at which it's thrown. So to find this point, I should either treat the second half of the trip with this point being the initial location, or this half of the trip with this point being the final location. And as I said, I took the second half of the trip. So this delta y is equal to 1 half t 1 half squared, because it's only half the time is when it's falling. So I end up getting 15.5 meters. So again, hopefully we can go over that in class and you're attentive enough where that makes sense. Thanks.